Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a site to site connection. So given that this is Seattle, this is Denver, Colorado, uh, what we want to do is we want the network here, the LAN network here to have access over to this LAN here. Uh, I'm going to open server 1 and then on server 1 we're going to check first the IP to see currently as you can see this is actually in this range and my <clears throat> my uh what's it called my default gateway which is my uh, firewall is actually having the ip so i can actually ping that as well as i can actually open the web browser with that same ip and um, browse that same um firewall to do uh, any GUI configuration that I want to do uh, on it. So basically, I have um, web access to that IP. I also can actually ping that IP. <clears throat> the next thing I want to show you is I want to see if I can, from this PC here, this server one here, ping anywhere in denver so first thing i want to do is to ping this one ip which is 172.17.67.206 as you can see i can actually reach the one ip from here so definitely the next thing i want to do um um sorry is do i have sorry i made a mistake there do I have access to the internet? Definitely, I do have access to the internet. So I can actually get to the internet. I can actually browse anything I want to browse. Now, do I have access to ping in this firewall on the LAN interface, which is the answer is no. So I'm going to go to server two and I'm going to do the pinging again the same way. This is server two. I'm going to still leave server one pinging. I want to check the IP address. As you can see, this is the IP that I'm pinging. And then from server 2 here, you can see the IP that was not replying here is replying here because it is its own LAN. And then from server 2, can I actually ping the 1 of server 1? which is 207, yes I can. Can I reach the internet? Yes, I can. And then the next thing I want to do is, can I actually ping the gateway? Which was one of the things I pinged here earlier. That is this replied when I ping it. As you can see, it did reply when I think it, so I'm going to try and think here. And then what you see is that there's no response. Let me try and think it here again just to show you that um, when I'm on the LAN, I can actually reach my default view, but when I'm actually remote, I cannot. So what I want to show you is how to create a site to site VPN. Uh, of course, if you can't. If this cannot reach this default gateway, do not expect this to be able to get to any any network here as well. So, what I want to do is to put a side to side VPN from here down here, and then do the same thing so that we can have access from here to this network here, and then from here to this network here. So, what I'm going to do first is to log in to the Seattle firewall. On the CF firewall, I'm going to create a VPN, IPsec VPN wizard. I'm going to say, call this Seattle, and call it Seattle HQ. It's a side to side VPN, I'm not using any that. The remote device is using a 40 gig device. I'm going to click next. My remote IP is 172.17.67.206. That's very, very important you get that correct. My pressure key. Make sure that the pressure key that you have here 
is actually the same pressure key you have on the other end. My local interface, which is my LAN, which I want them to have access to, and then the remote interface, which is the LAN of Denver, which is actually the subnet. But if you have other subnets in Denver, you can actually type them here. So I'm going to go next and then create. It's that straightforward. You can see VPN has been set up. We'll go to the next <clears throat> location, which is Denver. We're going to log in there. And then, uh, as you can see, this is Denver. So, which is this is Seattle. So, it's a different device. Create a VPN. VPN, IP set VPN reset here, Denver. I can just say site. Site to site, no sub, no NATs. It's a 40 gig on the other hand as well. Next, my <coughs> remote IP is 207. And then I'm using the same pressure key. And then clicking next. Let's just be sure that I type that correctly. And then clicking next. My local interface is still for three in this case, which is <clears throat> that network. And then my remote network, which is the LAN 177.0 slash four, which is a LAN of Seattle. Next, and then in this case here, click create, and then you can see VPN has been set up. Show tunnel list will show you that you have the site to site created on using your binary interval USB, which is your one interface and it's currently inactive you go to seattle show tunnel list you notice know, is the same thing it's currently inactive so you you need to click on this inactive and now take you to ipsec monitor you can actually get there by coming here and clicking ipsec monitor if you have the comprehensive um dashboard now what i'm going to do that as you can see here i have phase one is up but my phase two is down so what i'm going to do is to bring up my phase two click on this and bring up you can just say bring up all phase two selector you can as well just say phase two selector which is basically this one so whichever one most of the time this is enough to bring you up but if you want to bring up everything that's fine but i'll just choose this and i'll bring up the link as you can see this is up notice incoming data currently is zero byte means there's no traffic so the same thing here we just refresh this and then you can see it's up once you bring up the tunnel on the other end this one comes up if not if one of them as none of them comes up it means there must have been maybe an ip address misconfiguration somewhere so just go around and check your configuration so everything here looks good as you can also see this is phase one and phase two selector are both up and then there's no traffic here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my server one and then on my server one, I'm going to ping. Remember my server one IP address is 177.254. I need to ping. Denver default gateway, which is um, here, 10.192.192.254, and basically pinging this interface here. So, notice once I ping that, as you can see, I now have access to pinging this device. So, basically, what this is telling you is now from um seattle which is this one here which is this pc here if i open the web browser i can actually access i could access the 40 gates of denver look at that so that tells you that your site-to-site -site connection is working so I'm going to go to server 2 and do the same pinging. Now since earlier I was unable to ping this IP which is the 40 gate of Seattle from Denver. I'm just going to repeat the command and hit the enter key. Notice this, I can ping it as well.
So if you can ping that device, it means that also from the web browser of this device, of this server here, I can as well remote uh, into, uh, what's it called in the login on server one. Well, server two is coming up. Okay, now I can as well connect to Seattle from Denver. So here you can see, do not forget, I'm in Denver, let me show you, by using IP config, this is my IP. And if you can see, I'm, being, I'm actually opening the web browser, or the 40 gates, or on the other end, using the LAN IP, I'm not, I'm not using the one item, this is using the LAN IP. So you can see, I have <clears throat> the site-to-site -site connection up and running. So here I can basically ping so you can see I have access to pinging that. So now I can open it from the web browser and log in to this as well. And I'm gonna show you, don't forget server two. Server one is Seattle, server two is Denver. So on server one I try to open. Denver from Seattle, I can open Denver on server two from Seattle, sorry, from Denver, which is which is server two. Server two is in Denver. I can actually uh, open Seattle firewall. So there's basically no limitation there. The next thing I want to do is to see if I can actually ping from my server two into my server one. Let me show you. So on server two, let's see if I can ping 192.168.177.1. Now, notice this is not replying. And if this is not replying, there is one reason why it's not replying. Remember the Windows PC has its own inbuilt firewall that blocks all traffic from coming in so what we're going to do is to come to server one and then locate the firewall and turn it off so go to the start button type firewall it's also on the control panel windows firewall click windows firewall for the control panel Once the dialog box open on the left side of the pane, on the left pane, you're going to see turn Windows Firewall on or off. Notice currently it's turned on, so I'm going to turn it off, both for the private and for the public. In this case, just for tests, I can, I'm going to turn it back on once I'm done. Click OK. Once you turn it off, the next thing we want to do is to test the ping. Notice that it's back on. So if we do, um, let's say a continuous ping, for example, and then we're gonna turn it back on, then you're gonna see the moment we turn it on, you're gonna see we're gonna lose connectivity to the ping. Notice. It's no longer replying now, it's timing out. Let me see. Let me turn it on only on the public network and then turn it off on the private network. And then, so on my private network, I can ping. Notice that. So it means that you can ping from the internet, so which is good. I'm okay with that. So basically, in my private network, I can ping. But uh, over the internet, you'll be able to ping this PC. That's fine with me. So basically, that is that. So if I turn that on back, what you see is that I would stop pinging notice that it's already stopped pinging so basically all you need to make sure is that the private firewall is turned off so that will allow you to actually ping from your PC on the LAN 
over to the next PC or the, over the uh, to the other device on the other network. So basically, now you can see this server one now have full access to this land here, just by creating a side to side VPN connection. Now, since we have a continuous ping running, let me just show you something briefly. I'm gonna go back to my browser. Let me try and put this. Okay, I'm in Seattle, so I'm going to go to Denver. And I'm going to turn off or shut down the tunnel. So I'm going to go to VPN, IPsec tunnel. Notice it's currently up. So I'm going to click on this um, uh, click on the up and then here you notice that we have some traffic incoming data you can see the traffic here which is good so i'm going to turn this off or bring it down so i'm going to bring down the entire tunnel that's what i'm just going to do bring down the entire tunnel and then I click on ok notice what then happens the moment i bring down the entire tunnel oh sorry uh, it's still up. Let me see. Refresh. Oh, that didn't go down. <laughs> that didn't go down. Okay, I'm going to bring down phase 2 tunnel. Bring down phase 2 tunnel. Okay, now that is down. Good. So now let's see if the ping game is still working. Notice it's timing out. So what we're going to do next is let's bring it back up. Bring it up. I can bring up all phase tools, like I said. Notice, the moment you bring it back up, it's back up online. Let's take it down. Notice the moment, oh, I just need to be sure that that tunnel is down. Um, trying to take it down. Refresh that. Still up. <laughs> okay, finally we were able to bring it down. Uh, no, that took a while. Okay, as you can see, once it's down, nothing. Let's refresh. If it comes back up, which is actually what it's basically doing, it's basically re-establishing the, the, the connection. If it comes back up, you see it's that's actually pinging again. So um, I hope I've been able to show you how to set up a side-to-side -side VPN connection uh, between two different networks. So this is basically the same thing you do in a real life scenario. The only difference will be the public IP will be different. Um, the public IP you're using on the Seattle in the real life environment will be different from what I have here. So once, once, once you put the IP address that you're using on your one interface, let me show you basically what I'm trying to say. Once you put the IP address you're using on your one interface, which is actually what I have here. Once you put the IP address of, of your, on your one on the other network, you put it on as your remote network, everything should work the way it's expected to work uh, please subscribe and click on like on my videos and uh, if you have any question please put it in the comments i will be um, happy to provide some support as needed thank you so much for watching and have a great evening